Well, it is a beautiful day to, to be a Mother's Day, or at least we consider a Mother's Day here in the church because that's when we get together to honor our mothers. Although we do know that every day is Mother's Day, but we honor our mothers every day, and, and so do we fathers. We live in a country that uh, mothers, and especially fathers, are not fulfilling their, their duties. And, uh, you know, it's, it's been said, as the family goes, so the country goes, and we're suffering because of it. And I was thinking before I came up here, I'm hungry, because I didn't eat breakfast. But you know, think about that. Who fed you when you were a child? It was always your mother. <laughs> I guess my mother wasn't here to tell me to eat breakfast. Uh, although Rose tells me that every once in a while. <clears throat> There is a, the cartoon character Calvin and Hobbes once said, God put me on this earth to accomplish a certain number of things. Right now, I'm so far behind, I'll never die. <laughs> well, that might be Calvin's <laughs> perspective, but, uh, you know, I'm coming to the conclusion, the conclusion that even though I may not I'm every, accomplish everything I want to do, uh, God's the one that decides when he's when uh, he's accomplished with me and what he asked for me. But, you know, what we do and what we become and what we accomplish has got probably as much as anything in, in our lives is what, is what our, our mothers has prepared for us or has it had input in our lives uh, because to a large degree we are who our parents were and especially our mothers because she's you know, the, the greater nurturing parent. Uh, you know, both parents have a, a major role in our lives, but uh, mothers certainly have a strong influence. I've been blessed with, with a mother that, you know, sacrificed for me and my siblings, and I'm sure most of you have done the same. But have you ever considered that mothers are and, and should be what a church should be? as a m mother prepares an environment for raising a family with her husband, so the church should equip itself and become an environment for su sustaining the family of God through the grace of the Heavenly Father. As a mother nurtures, bears, nurtures, and teaches her children, so the church should be spreading the gospel and teaching God's word which would do the same thing for God's children, the children of God, to, to uh, almost uh, as a, a, a beginning home for us to, uh, to mature in. And as children love and honor their mothers and their, thereby please their fathers, so the children of God love and honor God's church because both mothers and the church, they're institutions that are ordained by, by God Almighty. Uh, God designed things a certain way, and you know, if we would follow all his uh, designs, the world wouldn't be in the shape that it's in today. If we had fathers and mothers and, and children acting as they should, uh, things would go much more ac according to God's plan, but uh, we know that, that mankind has his own ability to make his decisions, and they're not, they're not always right. Mothers are teachers, they're disciplinarians, mothers are cleaning ladies, they're gardeners, they mow the lawns, uh, and you know, even even a mother understands that baking, cookie, baking cookies are often more important than cleaning the windows. Uh, you know, mothers carry on a lot of things. They're nurses, they're doctors. You've heard Dr. Mom. They're often psychologists, employ a lot of reverse psychology. Uh, counselors, chauffeurs, coaches, developers of personality, molders of vocabulary and shapers of attitudes. Mothers are soft voices saying, I love you. And most of all, mothers are a link to God. 
uh, a child's first view and impression of God's love is through their mother, I believe. Mothers are, are all these things and much more. It's, it's an honored profession. It's an honored office. Uh, I'd like this morning to consider one mother in, in, that we find in the New Testament, and that's uh, Mrs. Zebedee, the mother of James and John. If we read in Matthew 20, verse 20 through 23, we read where, where she comes on the scene and we, we, under, we have a testimony of, of uh, who she is. So then the mother of, Zebedee, of Zebedee's sons came to him with her sons, kneeling down and asking something up from him. And he said to her, what do you wish? And she said to him, grant that these two sons of mine may sit, one at your right hand and one on your left in your kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, you do not know what you ask. Are you able to drink, <clears throat> are you able to drink of the cup that I am about to drink and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized, baptized with? And I think he's turning to the sons, asking them that question. And they said to him, we are able. So he said to them, you will indeed drink my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with, but to sit at my right hand or on my left is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it is prepared by my Father. Well, I think their mother, Mrs. Zebedee, was, she was aware of the teachings of, of Jesus about the kingdom. Christ went about preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Uh, about this kingdom to come. And, you know, they didn't fully understand it. They had some misconceptions, but uh, you know, she was also aware that her sons, James and John, were pretty close to him because, you know, it was uh, Peter, James, and John that were always right there with him. In fact, they were the ones that were on the Mount of Transfiguration, which was a signif significant event. Uh, so, uh, you know, she knew that in the kingdom, because Christ talked about, about it some, he alluded to it, that there were positions of responsibility and of, of authority. And, uh, you know, after Peter had asked what they would receive because of all they had done, you know, the sacrifice they did, we find this in, uh, in fact, it, in Matthew 19, just the previous chapter, uh, 28 through 29, it says, So Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say unto you that in, in the regeneration, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses and brothers and sisters or fathers and mother or wife or children or lands for my sake shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. And I know that Sister Zebedee knew what Jesus spoke of and because her sons, I'm sure, related these things to her. So she knew that, that there would be positions of authority. Uh, and Jesus had told them the story of the landowner, how that, uh, that uh, landowner went out and found laborers early in the morning and they agreed on, agreed on a fair wage, and and then at noon he found some more, and he and they were, while the others were still working. Then on towards the evening they found more, and and they and they started working. Yet the Lord paid them all the same, and uh, they all received the same wage. And so you know, in the kingdom, somebody's deciding who's doing what, and what the rewards are, and uh, you know. Her mother was looking out for her sons. She was wondering what, what positions of authority uh, they would have in the Lord's, Lord's uh, in this new kingdom. And, you know, they really thought that Jesus was going to come in, you know, riding on a white horse and just subdue everything then and there. Uh, that's because sometimes we see through a glass darkly. We, we know that the, the future has great promises and hopes, but we don't know, always know what God's doing. And we don't know how it works out in our lives. 
God works through our lives in ways that are just uh, are not the way we would do it. It's not the story we would write. But as we grow in the, in, in the Lord, we realize that God wants us to be something. He wants us to have a certain character. And just as our mothers look out for us and they want us to be good people, but uh, God allows us to walk, you know, live in this on this earth, go through hardships. And uh, uh, I read a I read a story a, a poem the other day. I didn't bring it with, but it tells how the mother, starting out, thought that you know motherhood is just the greatest thing. But later on, you know, as in raising her children, she realized that some of these things that the ch her children had to go through were good for them and that they, they became stronger because of it. And, and as she, she aged and they grew up to be fine young people, she realized that you know, mothering was much more than just giving birth or the early stages of elementary, but a mother's job it carries on through their children's lives. And, and, uh, and it's, it, so is life today with us. You know, as our children of God, we, we go through these things and we are better people for them. But God has his way of doing things, and they're, they're glorious beyond our understanding. So when the opportunity presented itself, she came to the Lord. Matthew says, in, as we read earlier, that, that uh, you know, she bowed down to him and made the request, grant these to my sons of mine may sit, one on your right hand and the other on your left, in your kingdom. Well, we could criticize her for being maybe a little overbearing, uh, presumptuous. Uh, a lot of commentators have, if you read some of the comment commentators on, on, on her. Uh, <clears throat> but I, I really think we need to rethink about what her goals were. Because, uh, you know, we, we need to recognize that when she came to Jesus, you know, while Jesus didn't grant her request, he didn't deny it either. Uh, you know, he simply reminded her that the cost of sitting at his right and on his left was uh, was it, that was a considerable position. It was something that the father determines of who's going to be taking that kind of authority and not. Uh, you know, it was her prayer that her sons might be part of the kingdom. That's a very noble request. And, uh, you know, there are considerable, uh, 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 her, her goals and her need wants for her, her sons was commendable. Uh, you know, you can't think of a, a, a more important task of a mother than to see that her children are, are serving in, in God's kingdom. I mean, there's a lot of mothers that don't go that far with their children. <clears throat> and, you know, there's a lot of mothers that pray. Some pray out of necessity. Some pray because motherhood is often not easy. In fact, it's, at times it can be extremely difficult. But, uh, and, and sometimes mothers just pray out of frustration of it. And, but, uh, uh, and being parent is not easy, but it's nevertheless, I think the greatest goal of any mother is to see their chi child, especially, of course, if they're Christian, they're serving God, is to be there in the middle of it, to, to be serving God and, and the, the character that they become, they take on that character. <clears throat> A lot of mothers, you know, they want their children to be doctors and lawyers and all kinds of things. They want them to be, be driving fine cars and live in good neighborhoods and, and uh, but, you know, not so concerned with, with serving God. Uh, Jesus, you know, Jesus talked about, you know, the vanity of, of attaining the whole world, you know, and, and, and living your own, losing your own soul. So Mother, Mother Zebedee, uh, is is not asking for uh, is 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 asking for the most important things in life for her children. 
<clears throat> so she was praying earnestly for that they would be part of, of that kingdom. Uh, and we should have the same concern, I think, for our children. We should want our children to be, to serve God and to be uh, uh, people that contribute to others around us and, and, uh, and, and uh, exhibit uh, what Christ is. And, uh, you know, they should pray that, that they're saved from this vile generation that, that they talked about. And it certainly isn't any less vile today than it was then. <clears throat> she also prayed that her sons would be involved in the work of the kingdom, not just having the position, but involved in, 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 that, in that work. Uh, you know, that they would have a part in this, in this kingdom. And, uh, you know, just, in other words, uh, she, re she knew that it wasn't just good enough to just be a churchgoer or, uh, you know, just somebody that come and filled in the pews that, you know, well, they did their duty by, by doing that. There's, I think there's a lot of people that, that uh, that's what they think is good enough. Just to, you go to church, you're a good person. I really think that God expects more for us, and a good mother expects a lot more than that from, from their children. Uh, God wants us to be involved in the work. God wants us to be outgoing and caring for others. And that's what a mother is, does, is, is they, they treat us to love others, because that's what you know, when a, when a person, when you're a teenager, you're mostly absorbed in yourself. When you, when, when you meet that point in life when, when you become a parent, everything changes. Instead of, you know, it's this, it's, it's this. You know, you're, you're, you, your whole perspective on life changes. And so it does as you take on other responsibilities, but especially uh, uh, parenting. It really does have a profound effect, and I think probably one of the most maturing things in a person's spiritual life is become a parent or taking on those responsibilities. And there's other people that, you know, take on those responsibilities that aren't just mothers and fathers. Uh, there are people that, that care for others, and uh, uh, <clears throat> that certainly does affect us because if we if we grow up and mature, always receiving, and always looking out for ourselves, uh, it becomes a miserable world. And that is the mentality that goes with a society that always thinks that way. And there is never rest. You know, we live in a country that is becoming more disturbed all the time and in chaos and that. And that's because everybody is wanting something. Everybody is looking for mother government to give them something and not be responsible for it. Uh, and it's a bad way to be. The mother that, that is always giving everything to her children and not expecting them to, to uh, make their own way and, and to be responsible is not a good mother. Uh, but uh, Mrs. Ebedee cared for her children. She wanted her children to be involved and to be walking in, in, uh, in the footsteps of Jesus. The third thing is she had great expectations for her, her sons. And I like that. I think that uh, I think we should always hope for the best in our children. Because if, we're, if, if we are uh, uh, expecting the least, that's what we're going to get. And, and they will know that. Uh, you know, she wanted them to be on the right and the left hand of, of, of Jesus. She, uh, uh, you know, when, when you're working in the kingdom, it, it's kind of like the verses we read in Ephesians today, where even, even if you're a slave or a servant, you should be always doing your best and doing it in the, for the Lord, not just because of who you're serving or whatever, but uh, so it is in God's kingdom. We should always be trying to please the Father, the Heavenly Father, and doing the best we can. 
So, you know, we might think of Mrs. Debbie to be as, as being proud or presumptuous, but I admire her, her boldness to, to, uh, to be proactive. Uh, I don't think that we should settle for mediocrity. We shouldn't settle for just good enough. You know, we should, we should uh, do as Paul says, you know, to contend for the faith, to reach out for the, for the high calling that uh, was set before us. Uh, just making it through the door shouldn't be good enough. And, uh, you know, I think all of us should do what we hope our mothers would want us to do, and that's, that's to, to be the best we can be. That's what, that's what a godly mother wants her children to be. She wants, to, she wants her children to be people that honor God in their lives. And, and, and uh, you know, we honor, honor, honor mothers because that's what God wants us to do. He, ador he, he ordained it that way. Uh, he ordained it for fathers to be fathers, to take their positions and in fact, it is so important that when we were given the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments, that it was the Fifth Commandment, right in the middle. It's the heart of, of God's will for his people. So when it says in Exodus 20, verse 12, honor your mother and your, fa your father and your mother, that the days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is gi gives you, uh, you know, it's, it's mothers and fathers, I don't know how you can speak of just mothers alone without fathers because the commandment includes both. Uh, but uh, they are at the core of who we become and who we are. And uh, just, I think it's through our fathers and our mothers and our learning to honor and obey them that we get to know who the father is, that we see God in them and uh, in that relationship and we honor them if we if we love God uh, after all it's it's what our father would want us to do so uh, I think we should you know no matter what the situation uh, honor and respecting our mother is, a, is, is an honorable thing God bless you